Yo, what up, people? It is Brendo Reviews, the one and only. I hope you enjoyed that little intro clip. And today we are looking at a couple of cool products that I kind of threw together to do a, uh, a little video. Today we are looking at how to sound like the one and only Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath on a relative budget. And we've got a couple cool products to uh, demonstrate how to do that. I hope you enjoyed the song, uh, my little cover of Into the Void. That I did the beginning, kind of quickly whip that up. At first, um, I do need to address one thing before we start. I'm not playing an SG. And now, I know some of, some of the purists are going to be like, what the hell, why aren't you playing an SG? Simple answer, I don't have one. I do not own an SG, but I do own a Les Paul. And uh, the other two guitars I have with me at the moment are... Telecaster and a Gretsch. I don't know if either of those would have worked. The telly maybe, because it's got like hot single coils close to P9s. Anyway, early days it was for for Tony. It was um uh it was like a 60s SG with P90s. I don't have a guitar with P90s or an SG or a 60s SG. So I just thought fuck it. I'm just gonna have to go Les Paul. Um, and it's like he used humbuckers at points as well. So this is my 1980 something 1984 Greco. JS55, it's just a Les Paul custom copy. I think it did pretty well. I think it sounded pretty good. We're not really looking at the guitar that much today. Today we are looking at the pedals and the amp. Well, mainly the one pedal and the amp. So we're looking at the Black Country Customs TI Tony Iommi Boost. This is a, a Laney thing. This is the guys from Laney, unsurprisingly. Um, and it's based off his famous uh, modded... Dallas Arbiter Rangemaster that he used uh, on the first album most notably and then, you know, subsequent albums. Uh, and then we've got the Orange Micro Dark as the amp. Now, once again, I hear some of you fanboys going, why, but uses Laney, man. But we're talking about, we're, talk we're trying to go relative budget here. This is not a super expensive pedal. It's not super high end. Um, and the, the Micro Terror is quite, or the Micro Dark in this case, is quite affordable and it, it's it's like a hybrid it's got like a valve preamp one of the either the parap or the preamp is valve and the other one that isn't valve is solid state um but yeah it's fucking it's a loud amp like it looks little but it's really loud i don't i don't even have it halfway and it's it's bloody loud in the room and yeah i just thought you know they, they don't they're not known for using orange but i feel like orange kind of started at the same time as laney and kind of from that same era, they're both English amps. They're both kind of known for the kind of stoner genre type thing that Sabbath helped create. And if you look at the, there might be more instances, but the one I always remember is the um, uh, Paranoid film clip. There's orange amps in there. So I thought orange is good. And Laney don't, don't they do do like cheap ones, but they're not that common. These are everywhere. And I feel like these pedals, I've seen them all over the place. Uh, and then we have the Hall of Fame 2 from TC which is simply just providing some plate reverb going into the loop of the amp because we are using gain at the front. Um, this was just, this wasn't in his amp, obviously. It was like a studio trick, especially if you listen to like Sabra Cadabra or like Iron Man, there's heaps of reverb and it was mostly plate. So got the plate reverb going. It's not on that much, but you obviously can turn it on more if you want. So for the controls here, let's check that that's it. Still going. We have drive, volume, I think it's low, high, so bass, treble, and then we have a mid switch. Um, I pretty much have everything on the pedal at 5. I have the the drive at 5.5, I have the volume at 6, both the EQs are at 5. Uh, and I have the mid switch in the middle at nothing. So if you flick it up, it's a, it's a high mid boost. Flick it down, it's a low mid boost in the middle, there's no mid boost. I, I want to try and keep it as original... 
as possible. You know, he only had two knobs on his original range master, so I thought let's just keep it keep it simple. Um, and then for the amp, we pretty much had the gain halfway, the shape, which is like the tone control, uh, kind of just over, just over halfway, halfway between, halfway and three quarters, if you want to say it that way, and the volume just below half. And then yeah, here's the controls. Pretty much everything's pretty pretty low on the on the Hoff too. So yeah, um, let me just quickly check that I'm still in tune, and then I'll show you how it sounds. All right, oh, see, so you've got a bit of a taste then. Let's turn this off Ooh, without knocking it over. And let's turn that off. I'm just gonna show you just how the amp sounds on its own. So this is how it sounds. <laughs> I'm in a C sharp standard as well, because um, the Sabbath switched over around the kind of the time of like Volume Four, I think, and Master Reality. They switched over to um, drop my guitar pick. They switched over to doing C sharp standard because it was low. I don't know how he did it because uh, Tony is famed for using really light strings, um, and he would use like no, he would use like eights, I think he would use eights for standard and nines for C sharp. And I've got 10 to 52s on this, and it's still struggling to stay in tune. I mean, the tuners are a bit shit, but like they're, they're not, probably not any better than they would have been on the old, you know, 60s SG. So I don't know how. He must have, he must play super duper light. Um, I think he does. I think that's kind of part of his thing. Anyway, um, I'll add in the reverb next, so you can hear kind of how much it's doing. So here's without. <laughs> So that's how it, that's just a little bit, just a, a little bit to give you some. All right, let's, uh, I'll just turn it on and let's just see, see how it goes. So yeah, there you go. There's some great sounds. Some great sounds. I don't know how it would go in a rehearsal. Probably pretty good. I've never tried this amp like with a drummer, but if you're not looking for clean sounds, just crank it and go for it. Because there's no way this thing can this amp can be loud and clean at the same time. I just don't think it works like that. But the how good is the fucking Tony Homie bass, dude? It's so good. It's if you're looking for a treble booster, there can be so much more than just a treble booster. This is the one, because you can, with the mid switch and the controls, you can make it do so much. And even through a clean amp, it has a decent amount of gain on tap just on its own. 
And yeah, they really knocked it out of the park with this one. This is a, such a great buy. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed um, my, you know, my little escapade down the... I don't normally do, uh, you know, trying to sound exactly like an artist. And this doesn't sound exactly like him. It's not going to. But I was just trying to, you know, it's in that ballpark. If you're looking to get that sort of vibe, I think this would be a great little kind of mini reek to start you off. I think, I think um, the only thing you could do is replace this with an SG, obviously. And if you're looking for one that's not too cheap, get kind of like one of the upper ranges of the Epiphone range. Uh, get like an SG in there. I used to have a Les Paul in that kind of range. Um, and it was it was good. It was good. It had coil tap as well. So maybe you could even try coil tapping to get close to the P90 sound. And then you've got the humbucker. Or you could get the signature. He does have a signature at your phone. If you can find one of those. Perfect. There you go. You're sorted. You know. Um, as for amps, I'm sure there's like a Laney practice amp. Something maybe along the lines of the Marshall DSL-40, which I've got. Um, which I also, would, the Marshall DSL-40 would probably do fine as well. Getting similar tones, but yeah, you, you're kind of getting further away because you didn't really use Marshalls. As far as pedals, I mean, I think there's lots of treble boosters, but this is one of the best. If you if you want to have a pedal that is the sound to run into a clean amp, the uh, Catlin Bread Sabra Cadabra is really good. You know, I, I really want to get one of those. If you're watching Catlin Bread, hook me up. Hook me up, send me a message. But yeah, I think this is just a a great little reek that just sounds sounds magical. It sounds magical. Uh, one other thing I, I forgot to mention. Um, a lot of the time he would uh, roll his volume knob back to like 8 and then uh, for rhythms and then roll it back up for leads. I didn't do that because I wasn't doing any leads in like the in the excerpt in the end of the void thing. There wasn't really any leads. But um I'll play you out. I'll play around with the, the volume knob. It's pretty responsive. These are pretty hot pickups. I think if you were using some less hot pickups, it would clean up nicer, but whatever, man. Anyway, yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Laney and Orange for making some dope products for all of us tone nerds out there. Please like, subscribe. Um, and that's really it. Have a good one. I'll play you out with some dope riffage. <laughs>